Today we are carrying on with being devoted to the cause and we're going to be looking today at shining brightly, shining brightly people, which we're already doing in the house today. You know, when we're sharing our testimonies, it's us shining brightly. When we're encouraging one another, it's us shining brightly. And I don't know about you, but those testimonies really moved me. So I apologize if I start crying up here as well. Um, but it's amazing. It's amazing. When we join together, share what God is doing, it lifts our spirits, it lifts our souls. And you know what? It empowers us, it empowers us. So let me just say, the most crucial place you guys need to be is in the family of God, is in church, doing this together, because this is what keeps us going. God is awesome. Absolutely awesome. All right, let's start. So today we're doing about shining brightly. Now, um, back in like ancient Greek, they used to do these races called the um, torch relay race. And it was all to do with passing on the light. And what used to do is there used to be a big relay that would go across the island. And it would take 45 men to go across 10 different tribes to complete this race. And what they had to do is the torch would be lit and then they have to complete the race, passing on the um, torch to they get to the finish line. Now, the winning team was not the team that passed the line first. It is the team that passed the line with their torch still blazing. Their light had to still be going. If their torch went out, they got disqualified. It's the same for us. We need to make sure that our lights keep shining, that we're passing on the baton from generation to generation. Today, you're seeing that evening epic as we raise um, Blake up into a more senior role. It's part of handing on the baton. It's a part of believing in him that he's going to go further, do greater. Because you know what? What me and Charles are building, we don't want the people coming up behind us to sort of come to the same level with us. They're going to overtake us. You know, Blake already is. The young people are going to be overtaking us. And it's exciting times. It's exciting because we're going to keep passing the baton, keep spreading the light. Now, with this light in the Greek times, it had important meanings because when there would be like wars between the neighboring um, um, sort of neighbors, neighboring cities, um, when this torch was going to pass through the island, the wars would stop because this light would be coming and this light would represent peace. It would represent unity. It would represent families. It would represent power and purity and peace because where there's light, there is power. And still today, when we do the Olympics, um, there is the symbol of the torch where it gets lit and then it's passed through. Now, when I was reading up on this, it's not actually when, because um, the torch, do you remember, um, the last, was it the last Olympics? The torch came through Basildon, didn't it? Um, and as it came through Basildon, now as the people did their stretch of the relay, they didn't pass on the actual baton that was lit. Because you see, everyone was given their own like torch bearer, if you like. And then as the person ran up to them, rather than just passing on the baton, what they did, they lit their baton from the person before them. So the flame was just passed on. And it was passed on from person to person to person until it got to its destination. That's you and me. That's how our light should be passed. That as we are shining brightly, as we are people that are rising up and we're saying, this is my God. Let me tell you about my God. Let me show you the hope that is in this world. Let me show you that we are victorious. When we shine our light, it's not us going, oh, here it is, passing it on to you. Oh, my bit's over now. We continuously keep going, but we pass on the flame, we pass on the light, then other people are carrying it. The other people see it, they want it, they grasp it, they run with it. We need to be people that are carrying our flame, carrying our light, and spreading it on to other people. In Philippians 2, verses 12 to 16, it says, Therefore, my dear friends, as you have obeyed, not only in my presence, but now much more in my absence, this is Paul speaking, continue to work out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the skies as you hold firmly to the word of life. And then I will be able to boast on the day of Christ that I did not run in labor, so I did not run or labor in vain. 
In the Message Bible, it says, provide people with a glimpse of good living and of a living God. Carry the light-given message into the night. We need to be like Harriers. We need to be people that aren't going through this life grumbling and moaning. That we're not going through this life talking about how unfair it is or I don't understand this situation. But actually, the way we conduct ourselves, the way we speak, is all about uplifting the people that are listening to us. Life could be miserable. Life could be really hard. At the moment, Jill was with her grandson and she doesn't know the outcome. We're believing, we're believing that there's going to be a great testimony there. We're believing that we are going to see that baby in this church and what a rejoicing day that will be but at the moment she's got to stand there and she's got to stand with her family in a place just believing and holding on to God not grumbling about it not moaning about it but declaring the goodness of her God in that situation how are we shining when life is tough are we still shining because the gist is we should be shining because of what Jesus has done Jesus has gone before us. He has won the victory. He has died for us here. He has died that we can have the victory, so we can have that relationship with God. And the more that we give our lives to God, the more that we just rely on him, the more that we come alongside Jesus, the more we should be shining. It should be an outgoing of what we're doing. As we spend time with God, we shine. As we listen to what God is saying, we shine because then our source of energy, our source of sort of understanding isn't coming from the situations in this world, but it's coming from Jesus. It's coming from our source. It's coming from our creator. And that's what's going to keep us shining when this world just seems so gloomy. Today, we are going to look at how to shine brightly. Paul says, do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may come blameless and pure, children of God without fault, in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the skies as you hold firmly to the word of life. So today we're going to look at Paul. We're going to look at his story, to why he, he sort of qualified to tell us to shine brightly. What's he done in order to be able to now stand all these generations late and say, hey, keep shining, keep shining in this world? Well, you see... The first thing that happens with Paul, he has an encounter with God. We cannot shine brightly before we've had an encounter with God. That has got to be the crucial part of what we need. Because you see, um, Paul at the beginning, when he was called Saul, he was actually the guy that went around killing Christians. When Jesus went back up to heaven, people didn't like what was going on. It caused a lot of fear in those times. So they wanted anybody that believed just to be wiped out, just to be killed, because, you know, it just stirred too many stuff. It brought up too many questions. So let, let's just get rid of Jesus. Let's get rid of anybody that follows him. So Saul's job was to go out and kill these Christians. And he did it with, like, no qualms at all, because he was just like, yeah, no, I believe that Jesus isn't the son of God. He's not real. And anyone that does believe needs to be um, killed. But on um, one of the, um, let me actually read it before I try to tell it, but we're going to look in Acts 9, starting at verse 1, because what happens is he has an encounter with God. It says in Acts 9, starting at verse 1, Meanwhile, Saul was uttering threats with every breath and was eager to kill the Lord's followers. So he went to the high priest. He requested letters addressed to the synagogues in Damascus, asking for their cooperation in the arrest of any followers of the way he found there. He wanted to bring them, both men and women, back to Jerusalem in chains. As he was approaching Damascus on a mission, a light from he heaven suddenly shone down on him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you prosecuting me? Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. The voice replied, I am Jesus, the one you are prosecuting. Now get up and go into the city and you will be told what you must do. The men with Saul stood speechless, for they heard the sound of someone's voice, but they saw no one. Saul picked himself up off the ground, and when he opened his eyes, he was blind. So his companions led him by hand to Damascus. He remained there blind for three days and did not eat or drink. Now there was a believer in Damascus named Ananias, and the Lord spoke to him in a vision, calling Ananias. Yes, Lord, he replied. The Lord said, go to Straight Street, to the house of Judas, where you will... Sorry, where you, where you, 
sorry. When you get there, ask for a man from Titus named Saul. He is praying to me right now, and I have shown him in a vision of a man named Ananias coming in and laying hands on him so that he can see again. But Lord, explained Ananias, I have heard many people talk about the terrible things this man has done to the believers in Jerusalem, and he is authorized by leading priests to arrest everyone who calls upon your name. But the Lord said, Go, for Saul is my chosen instrument to take my message to the Gentiles and to the kings, as well as to the people of Israel, and I will show him how much he must suffer for my name's sake. So Ananias went and found Saul. He laid his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road, has sent me that you might regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Instantly, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he regained his sight. Then he got up and was baptised. Afterwards, he ate some food and regained his strength. So here Saul is also Paul. They are the same person. And Paul has this encounter with God. He's got one mission to start with, to kill every believer. Then he has an encounter with God. He has this moment with God where all of a sudden all the evil desires in him, all the wicked ways in him are killed because of an encounter with God. The man is changed. Everything about his life has now changed. There's not one bit from his past that's coming over because he's now realised the truth. He's now seen that Jesus is who he claims to be. He is the son of God. He is the hope of this world. And now he wants to take Tell people. He wants to get out there. He wants to build churches. He wants people to know how amazing and mighty Jesus is. He had an encounter with God. And it's from that encounter that he could now start shining. He could now start saying to this world, hey, listen up. Hey, listen up. Have you heard? Have you heard about Jesus Christ? We must be people that encounter God, that know who God is. If we're to be a shining light, to show this world just how mighty and faithful our God is, we must first encounter him. Now, some of us here, we might never have encountered God. And Mary Ann, when we did communion, um, encouraged you guys that if you don't know Jesus, that you start a relationship with him. Because let me tell you, I've been a Christian now for many years. I could actually know how many years it's been. But I've been a Christian since I was about 12. I am now 39, um, so you can do it, work out the years yourself. But in those times, you know, it's not all been um, easy sailing. There have been challenges, but I know that I know that I know God, and I know that he is my hope in all situations. And I know that no matter what this life throws at me, I can carry on standing. And because of that, when trials come, I can shine. When trials come, I can stand and I can show this world how powerful our God is because first we must encounter him. So if you do not know Jesus as your own personal saviour, then at the end we're going to give you another opportunity to take up that relationship, because that is how we shine, stand and become strong. For others of us here, we might have encountered God and it might have seemed like a thousand years ago. That time when you first came to him and everything was just jolly, everything was just amazing, and you were like, come on, I can do this. But then life happens. And all of a sudden, that light that was shining, that light that was beaming out, has got dimmer and dimmer and dimmer because life, life, life. And if that's you today, if you're someone that you know you are not shining as brightly as you once were, then I encourage you, encounter God again. Because do you know what? In Psalm 139, we are told that we cannot count how many times a day God's thought turns towards us. We are his precious creation. We don't just encounter him once and then he goes, ah, I'm going to go and work with somebody else now. Daily, daily we can encounter God. Daily we can go into his throne room. We can spend time with him. We can get restored when we spend time with him. We can be empowered when we spend time with him. If we want to shine brightly, we must encounter God. Not just as a one-off, but on a daily, daily occurrence where we just rely on him and shine brightly because of him. So Paul, the first thing Paul did is he encountered God. The second thing that we can learn from Paul is that we must shine despite what other people think, despite what other people are saying about us, despite the expectations that other people put on us. 
When Paul first um, started believing, of course, he had this big desire to now start telling people to encourage other believers. But you see, the other believers, they've all heard about Saul. They've heard about this guy that's killing Christians. They've heard about this guy that's coming into their town to arrest them. And now all of a sudden, this guy wants to talk to them. This guy is saying, oh, I believe. Come and talk to me. Let me encourage you. And they're all like, it's a trick. It's a trick. He doesn't really believe. This is trying to get us to come out into opening so he can arrest us, so he can kill us. People knew the name and decided who he was. But then other people had to come in and say, no, he had an encounter. He had an encounter with God. He met God. He knows God. Listen to him. People will make up their mind about us. They will decide whether we're right or whether we're wrong. They will decide whether we're good at something or awful at something. I don't know about you, but I hate it when people come up to me and go, oh, aren't you supposed to be a Christian? Or, oh, that's not very Christian, is it? At those moments, I would just like to slap them and say, do you know what, just move on. But you can't do that. Because, in fact, in all situations, we need to shine and be an example to God. When people do in our heads in, and they will, that we still keep shining that we do not let this world crack us from who we're supposed to be. We do not let this world bring us down because we're shining brightly, because we know who we are, despite what other people are saying about us, despite what other people may believe about us, that we stay true to who we are. We don't let the past have a voice. Paul's ministry could have been stopped instantly if he let the guilt of the past come in and have the loudest voice in his head. He was going around killing Christians. He was destroying the work of God. But you know what? When he came to God, when he had that encounter with God, he had to leave the past behind because otherwise it would have been crippling. There's some of you here today, you need to leave the past behind. The past is the past. You leave it behind you, you walk forward and you shine. You don't let the guilt of the past stop you. You don't let the voices of the past stop you because you are a new creation. There is no condemnation when we are with God. We need to be people that keep moving forward, that we shine. We keep shining and showing people. And what Paul had to be, he had to be constant. Because at that point, people were watching. They were watching for him to slip up. They were watching for him to get it wrong. So they could go, ah, oh, told you so. But he had to be somebody that stayed true to what God had now shown him, that stayed true to the calling that God had put on his life. And he had to be somebody that was constant in all seasons. We need to be constant in all seasons. We need to be people that when life is absolutely marvellous, that we shine loud and bright and we share that. But then when our world seems to be crumbling around us, that still we carry on shining. We still talk about the faithfulness of God. Angela, today. Oh, I just cry every time I think about what Gray and you have shared today. But you know what? When she was going through cancer, she declared her healing. And I remember having that conversation with her. And there was one time when she went, I really hurt, but I know God's healed me. I know I'm healed, you know. She spoke it, she spoke it, she lived it, she shone. We had no idea of what was going on every morning that Gray just shared. We had no idea the, the actual struggle she was going through because her language, her body language was all about shining the glory of God out. I salute you, lovely lady. Because do you know what? When we shine, it encourages other people. We need to be, excuse me, we need to be people that whether life is great, whether life is the worst thing, whether life is painful, that we carry on shining. In 1 Corinthians 15, verse 58, it says, So my dear brothers and sisters, be strong and immovable. Always work enthusiastically for the Lord, for you know that nothing you do for the Lord is ever useless. Keep going. Keep fighting the good fight. Be consistent. Be who God created you to be. In 1 Peter 2, verse 9, it says, you, for you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for he's called you out of the darkness into the wonderful light. He's called you out of the darkness into the light. So let's shine. And do you know what? We are all human. We have flesh. And when our flesh is weak, when there are times when we know we don't shine as much as we should, where we let down God because we haven't quite spoken up as much as we can, we remember that we serve a faithful God, a God full of mercy and grace.
So if you're sitting here today and you're like, oh, but I haven't, I haven't been shining. I've let God down, so what's the point? Let me tell you, you go again. You go again and you just shine more brightly. You go again knowing that God's got your back. You go again going, do you know what, next time, next time I've got this, next time everyone's gonna know the goodness of my God in this situation. We never give up, we never give up. We keep fighting the good fight, we keep shining. And when we do let our lights dim a little, we go back to the throne room of God. We go back to encountering God. We go back to experiencing who God is and let him restore us. So with Paul, we learn we have to have an encounter with God. We have to shine despite what others may be thinking. And we shine in hard times. In 2 Corinthians 11, I'm not going to read it all um, just because of time, but Paul will list a huge list of what he's gone through, where he's gone through shipwrecks, he's gone through stoning, he's gone through, he has been whipped 39 times, 40 lashes and you die. He has been near the brink of death. He has been without food. He has been shivering cold because he's not had enough support around him. He has gone through some trials, some hard, hard times. And if you can read in 2 Corinthians 11, starting at verse 23, this massive long list. Do you think your life might be hard? Look at what he had to go through. There was trial after trial after trial. But then if we go into chapter 12 of 2 Corinthians, and if we go near the end where it says, God says to um, Paul, my grace is all you need. My power works best in weakness. So now I am glad to boast about my weakness. This is Paul speaking. I'm glad to boast about my weakness so that the power of Christ can work through me. That is why I take pleasure in my weakness and in insults, hardships, prosecution and troubles that I suffer for Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. When I am weak, then I am strong. Let me tell you, you are all going to have times when you feel weak, when you feel you can't do this. But in those moments, that is when you are strong. In those moments, that's when you raise up and say, do you know what? It's not about me. It's about him. It's about what he's done in my life, what he's doing in my life. I don't feel I can do this, but I'm going to shine because my God can. Because with God, I can do all things. When we encounter God, spend time with God, get to know God, he enables us to do far more than we can even imagine. I never, ever, ever dreamed that I would be a preacher standing up and talking to people because I spent so many of my um, younger years believing I couldn't even speak properly because of being orally dyspraxic. Yet God did something in me and here I am today. And I will shine because of the testimony of God in my life. We need to be people that will rise up, that will shine. In hard times, how bright do you shine? Are you somebody that as your life collapses will still say, but God, but God? Or are you somebody that says, where's my God? Because you know your focus needs to be in the right place. Rather than looking at what you haven't got, rather than looking at you know, the fact that you think God is a trillion miles away, remember Remember that God will never leave or forsake you. You go back to having that encounter with God, to the promises of God, and you stand strong. You stand strong knowing that he's got you. When you are criticised, when you are jobless, when ill hits your family, keep shining. Because in your weakness, you are made strong. In Matthew 5, verse 14 to 16, it says, You are the light of the world, like a city on a hilltop that cannot be hidden. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on the stand where it is given light for everyone in the house. In the same way, let your good deeds shine out for all to see so that everyone will praise your heavenly Father. Do you know, you carry the reputation of God. You carry the reputation of his home, of the church, wherever you go. How are you shining it out? What God are you showing? What reputation are you giving God? When the voices of other people stop us shining, when fear of expectations, of not living up to expectations, stop us shining, when hard times stop us shining, we're hiding our light under a blanket. And you know what? There are too many children of God, incredible children of God, that are hiding their lights. We cannot live that way. 
Now, not that long ago um, at Epic, I did an illustration, which I'm going to repeat to you guys tonight. Lovely Tamara, come and help me. Look at the joy on her face. Yay. Thrilled to be coming up. We see it. It's a lovely face. Look at this. Hey, right, this is our lovely Tamara. And um, I just want you to help me, similar to what we did um, on that Friday. Now, when we hide our, our lights, when we sort of put them under a blanket and we stop being who we are because there's fear of other people, what we're doing, we're masking who we truly are. So let me just put this lovely mask on you. Looking good, doesn't she? And you know, there's too many, can you see? There's too many children of God that are going around masked. Because you see, rather than shining our lights, rather than standing up in a world that will keep trying to knock us down, in a world that will bring different trials about how you should be living and what you should be doing and what you should be thinking, as children of God, what we've done is we've masked ourselves and we've gone, oh, Oh, I'm, I'm just going to keep safe. I, I'm just going to step back and I'll, I'll pray, but from back here and, you know, may, may God do something. But we're not shining. We're not speaking up. We've lost our voices because we're too scared about what, sorry, we're too scared about what people may think. We're too scared about what the outcome may be. What if we declare the goodness of God and then nothing happens? What if people start saying, oh yeah, but I remember when you did this and I remember when you did that. And all of a sudden the power that in us is just gone and we mask ourselves and we say no more. I, I just want to be safe. I just want to get through this world. So we hide behind our masks. We don't shine out our beautiful faces that God has given us, the beautiful light that he's put in us. We are incredible, incredible human beings I know this because God created us. I know this because God has put something special in every single one of us. In Ephesians, we're told about before he created anything, God thought about you and me because of how amazing we are. We are not created to be hidden behind masks. We are not created to hide away and say, oh, I just hope it all turns out. But actually, we're called to rise up. We're called to shine our light. The masks that we're hiding behind, they actually have to come off and they need to go. They need to be ripped up and they need to just be totally and utterly gone because this is who we're meant to be. We are meant to be mighty warriors for God. We are overcomers. We are victorious. We can do this because of our God. So when we mask ourselves, we take the power away from ourselves. We are actually, we put the mask there and we think, oh, this is my security. This is my protection. But the mask actually is your biggest limitation because when you do not shine for God, when you do not let God work through you, you are totally and utterly robbing yourself and this world of who you can be. You've been marvellous. Thank you very much. You can sit back down. Let's be people that shine. Let's show this world how mighty our God is. I challenge you, I dare you, in fact, that the next time you're out and you see something, try to bring God into a conversation. Try to tell somebody about who your God is. It could be that you start telling your story. Now, you for Christ, when they're sort of talking about how to evangelize, they say that first you listen to somebody's story, you show interest in them, and then you share a bit of your story, and then you tell his story. And the rest is history. <laughs> Clever, isn't it? <laughs> but we need to be people that we're shining. We need to be people that are not hiding behind masks, but in fact, we raise up and we show this world there is hope, there is grace, there is love, there's unconditional love, there is acceptance in God if only people know about it. Be people that are going to change this world by shining your light. How are you shining today? Does anybody know where you are right now? Do they know that you come to the house of God? Do they know that you follow God? Or do they think that you're just down the pub or you know, having a walk somewhere? What is it that you're showing in your life? What is it that people think when they first think about you, what will be the first thought they come to their head? Somebody that's angry and bitter or somebody that's always there? What light are you shining? Because do you know what? You have got an immense, incredible light that needs to be shone out. Only you walk where you walk. As a church, we can't all reach the people in the hospitals, the people in your schools, in your workplaces, in your families. But where you walk, where you tread, that's where you shine. 
That's where you take God. That's where you take the um, forgiveness of God when it's needed. You take the grace of God when it's needed. You speak life into situations that seem so dire because you carry on shining. Be people that will be world changers. Don't follow the trend of just going along with everything, going, ah, okay, but be the trendsetters. Shine your light, make a difference. I'm going to ask the worship group to come back up. And I want us to um, pray for a couple of people today. Now, if you are somebody here and you've not encountered God, and you're like, do you know what, I don't, want, don't know what this is about, then I urge you, encounter him. Come and know who he is. Come and know who he can be personally for you. And if you're somebody that you're like, oh, I encountered God, but it was like a thousand years ago. It was like a past life, it seems about. If you're somebody that's not encountered God on a daily basis, somebody that, you know, your light has dimmed because time has gone, then all I want you to do is I just want you to raise your hand. And then what we're going to do is at the end, I will come and find you and we'll just talk it through and we'll pray for you. But if you're somebody here that you know your light just needs to be relit a bit more, you need to encounter God that more, or you need that first encounter with God, just simply raise your hand. And then for the rest of us here, some of us, we're behind that mask. We're behind that mask and we're hiding. We cannot afford to be hiding anymore. So what I want to do as we start singing the next worship song, when the music starts, I encourage you all to stand up and just enter in, encounter God. And then if you know that there is a mask in your life that needs to be removed, then I want to just encourage you today, you break that mask today. And you do that by standing up, stepping forward, come up to the front, and we will stand with you, we will pray with you, and we will get rid of that mask so that you leave this place fully enabled, fully powered to shine your light in all its glory. So I'm going to hand over to the worship group. And I said, as we're singing, I'm going to be down the front as well. But as we're singing, if you need a mask removed, if you need to make that stand and say, no, no longer am I going to hide. No longer am I going to be fearful of what this world holds. But instead, I'm going to raise up. I'm going to shine with all my might. I'm going to show people the glory of my God. Then I encourage you, as we're singing, just come forward. We'll stand together. We'll pray together. Thank you.